No. All right. Welcome, everybody, to our Oils of the Bible class. My name is Jackie Ritz, and I am so, so excited about sharing with you guys some of the things I've dug into the Bible about, and I'm learning more about essential oils, herbs, and different plant medicine. It's a very big passion of mine. But before we get started, I have just a few rules for you guys, very easy, easy, simple rules. One is I want you to just sit back, relax, and have fun and learn. So grab yourself a cup of decaf coffee or some hot tea. I hope you have your pajamas on already. And just get comfortable, prop your phone or your computer up, and just have a good time listening and learning. Number two is I want to make sure that I am just sharing with you guys some tools and tips for even just creating more natural healthcare in your own life. So we're going to apply a lot of what we learn throughout as we dig into the Bible, and we're going to apply it and see how we can use it in modern day times. And so that's going to be a really good transition with each oil that we talk about. And tonight I'm just going to share a few things with you that is going to greatly benefit your health. So if you decide that using essential oils is something that you want to dive into more and learn more about, then the person who invited you is going to make sure that they follow up with you and they get those oils into your hands. So you'll have that opportunity tonight if that's something that you want to do. If this is something that you don't want to do, you don't want to buy, I want you to know that's completely okay. I'm just glad to have you here and the point of this webinar is just education, okay? So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and start my screen share and pull up my PowerPoint for you guys. Okay, let me get this thing off. There we go. All right, so I am Jackie Ritz. I am a founder of the Paleo Mama blog, and I'm also an essential oil advocate, and I love sharing and educating with people about essential oils. This is a really near and dear topic to mine because I, I am a Christian, and I love, love, love learning about plant medicine because I believe that God did not leave this earth medicineless for us. I believe that there's so much useful things and plants on this earth that we can use. And so that is actually what I'm going to school for right now. I'm in herbal medicine school. So it's a true passion of mine. And I love God. I love oils. So I love putting them together. And what a good month to actually do that, right? So I have a question for you guys. And you can type it in the chat or you can, you know, ask the person next to you if you're sitting here watching with somebody that you love. What experience do you guys have with essential oils? Have you never even heard of them before? Um, have you tried them before? Maybe somebody's given you a sample. Maybe you've used them or you use them regularly. Or maybe you've just been using them for a long, long time and you are just interested in essential oils in the Bible. So whatever one you fit into, you're going to learn something today and tonight. So just in case we haven't met face-to-face -face or through our oil group on Facebook, once again, my name is Jackie, and I love supporting people who are motivated to improve their health, like you. So when I started using essential oils about 12 years ago, I didn't understand how important the quality of essential oils was. And so I use them for cleaning. I use them for... Um, doing different things around the house, but I never felt comfortable and confident using them actually on my body and especially not on my children's bodies. And it wasn't until I was going through a really dark time in my life. I had lost my younger sister, my best friend, and I had a newborn baby and I had a two-year-old <laughs> and life really just hit me hard. So I was going through this really rough time. I was in a really deep, dark, having major feelings of depression. And I was looking for something to help me pull out of this. I had, a, I had an answer of something on a shelf that had side effects and synthetics and would probably do more harm to my body than good. 
And I was this, this close to actually doing that because I was so desperate. And that's when doTERRA actually came into my life. Pretty much saved my life. I heard of this bottle of this joyful blend. And I just thought I really needed some joy. But I'm a firm believer in, in God and Christ. And I knew that I had to do a combination of internal and external. And so externally, I started using this joyful blend and I started applying it. I started diffusing it into the air. And we'll talk about a little bit about how we do that. Um, and it was something that just continually I used throughout the day. And I noticed over the course of just a few months, my life just started getting a little bit brighter. I started dragging my kids out of the house. Um, I caught myself laughing several times, and that was how it all began. So that's my little story of how oils came into my life. I like to know a little bit about the person who's presenting, and so I wanted to share that with you guys today. Also, I am a Christian. I do not go in the way of any denomination. I guess you could consider me non-denominational. I believe in God. I believe in the Bible, and I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for me. And everything that I'm going to share tonight with you it comes directly from the Bible, okay? So it doesn't matter what denomination you are, what religion, you know, we are sharing simply directly from the Bible. All right, I gotta figure out why I can't scroll um, to the next slide. Hold on one second, guys, I'm having technical issues. Hey, Frank. I'm stuck. Give me one moment. Frank, please help. I am stuck, guys. I can't move to the next slide for some reason. I can't move to the next slide. I can't mute myself. That is extremely interesting. Oh, there you go. What'd you do? So you just have to tap on the class. <laughs> now, now, I will tell you right now, I will tell you right now that if any of you guys have any questions, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to probably go back. So. No, I can't get off. Okay, oh, there, there you go. go. Okay, cool. You can always just maximize that like you've done before. Yeah, so let's do this. All right. Cue the uh, cheesy elevator music. Let's just roll with that, and then what you can do Click is... Click down. Yeah. Okay. Um, just let us know in the comments if this is too small for you to be able to see. This hopefully will... You know what? Check it there out. There you go. Sorry about this, guys. We always have some kind of technical issues you such, can never fully trust such is the internet and such okay. is i believe that that should That's be perfect. sufficient right that should be good <sighs> all right <laughs> so that was just a little bit about me i want to make sure i shared that with you um, and i'm going to say this one time but it applies to everything that i say tonight the official fda disclaimer all right we love that right so any of the statements tonight have not been evaluated by the fda the products and the oils are not intended to diagnose or treat or prevent disease. Okay, guys? <laughs> All right. So what are essential oils? If you have ever smelled a rose or squeezed an orange and smelled the, the powerful aromatic compounds that you smell when you squeeze uh, an orange or a lemon, those are essential oils. So you've been able to experience them, but you might not have actually known what they are. Um, and these naturally occurring aromatic compounds, we find them in different seeds, in fruit, in roots, in bark. We find them in flowers. Mint is a really powerful family of, um, of perennials that produces really, really strong essential oils. So if you've ever grown mint, you know that as you uh, rub that mint in between your fingers, especially in the morning, it has a very strong essential oils that smell so, so invigorating. So they're both beautifully and powerfully fragrant. They give plants their distinct smells. And it's also very much, the smells are very much connected in our bodies to our, to our olfactory system. And that's why a lot of times when we smell something, it can instantly bring back memories 
um, from the past, either good memories or bad memories, depending on what that smell is. Um, and not only that, they have been used for a long, long time. And we're going to talk a little bit about their history, obviously, as we dig into the Bible times of using oils. But they have a very, very, very long history that they've been used for thousands of years for beauty treatment, for different healthcare practices, um, food preparation, culinary purposes. We've been using essential oils for many, many years. They are very powerful, so they're 50 to 70 times more powerful and more potent than the herb. So for instance, one drop of peppermint essential oil is equal to 28 cups of peppermint tea. So it's very potent and very powerful. Essential oils are naturally occurring throughout you know, the, the world and throughout the earth. They are plants, they protect plants against environmental threats. And they, provi they provide those beneficial properties that we use these oils for. And we're going to talk about how essential oils and how plants can answer many of the common health concerns or health goals that you might have in your life. They, they also, they work on a cellular level. And they can, they've been used for thousands of years. So when you choose to use doTERRA essential oils, you're using oils that are very carefully distilled from the plant that actually has been harvested in its indigenous, indigenous environment. That's one of my favorite things about doTERRA is that they're very conscious about where they harvest the oils and they make sure that it is harvested in an area of the world where it grows the best and it has the most therapeutic benefits. There's three different ways to use essential oils. So we're going to talk a little bit about the methods of use and then we're going to go into really four of my favorite oils that are mentioned many, many times throughout the Bible. So with doTERRA essential oils, we are using very high quality, very therapeutic quality of essential oils. It's much different than the oils that you find at Walmart or Best Buy or Amazon. They are extremely pure and very powerful. They have been actually tested in 11 different ways just to make sure that each oil is pure, free of solvents and pollutants, and they're 100% therapeutic grade. We use these oils in three ways, okay? So when we talk tonight about the different methods and the different way we use the oils and how this oil can benefit you, we're talking about using them three different ways. And I'll specify with each different oil what way you can use it. So internally is a very targeted way to use essential oils. And just like the herbs and the, you know, the herbs that we're talking about, they have a very rich culinary history. Our doTERRA essential oils can be used as pretty much you would consider it a dietary supplement that can be used for your targeted wellness. So, you know, we don't recommend, we'll go into a little safety, you know, little safety measures, but you never are taking more than one to two drops of essential oils internally. One of my favorite oils to use internally is our digestive blend. Um, it's an oil that is really good at calming the digestive system down. So when you're having those issues rise up, it's a great targeted way to use that digestive blend internally. Now, aromatically is the way that you have probably already used oils. You've probably smelled essential oils being diffused in a restaurant or a hotel. Uh, hospitals are diffusing essential oils now because they know how powerful just that aromatic use is to not only the employees, but also to all of the people that walk through the hospital. And that's where you smell it directly out of the bottle or you, you know, you rub it on your hands and you smell it on the palm of your hands. Um, it's, it, or you diffuse it. One of the very common ways we use essential oils around our house is we diffuse it. So that's a essential oil diffuser is where you put a water and a few drops of essential oil in it. it diffuses the oils in the air. And it's a very natural way to make your house smell good, to clean out the impurities in your air, and also just to boost your immune system, depending on what oils you're using. Topical use is another way to use oils. 
Um, it's used very frequently with massage therapists. They add essential oils to their lotion to provide a very topical soothing benefit to the muscles and the joints and the bones. Um, you can also use it topically with, um, with a carrier oil like coconut oil or almond oil or olive oil. You add it to that and rub it directly onto your skin onto the different targeted areas that you want to support. So those are the three ways that we really use essential oils um, the most. They're very safe and very easy to use. However, it's important that you know that therapeutic grade essential oils like doTERRA are very concentrated plant extracts. And they should be, they should be used very reasonably. Um, so I wanna take just a minute just to go over some safety guidelines with you so that you know how to use your oils when you purchase them from the person who invited you tonight. So never ever apply those oils to your eyes or down your ear canal. Um, we always make sure that we stay away from any kind of mucous membranes like our nose, all right, or our eyes, because this is a very sensitive area on our body and very prone to ir irritation. It's kind of like when you're cutting up spicy peppers or jalapenos, you know, that it can be very, very, um, very hot on your skin especially if in your mouth or if you get it in your eyes. It's the same thing with essential oils. We always recommend when you're starting out with essential oils that you dilute the essential oil. And this doesn't make it less potent or less effective. It actually makes it more effective. But this is where you add a few drops of essential oil with a carrier oil. So like almond oil or fractionated coconut oil. You add a few drops with it and then you apply it directly to any area on your body. Now, if you ever get essential oils in your eye or in an area that is, starts really causing some intense burning, make sure that you don't wash it out with water because water actually drives the oils in farther. So you wanna use like a vegetable oil or a carrier oil like olive oil to rinse and dilute the area as best as you can. So skin is super sensitive on children and on the elderly or if you have sensitive skin. So make sure that you are using this carrier oil of your choice when you're applying the essential oil topically. And also a little goes a long way with essential oils because they are pure concentrates. So the higher the quality of the oil, the more potent it's going to be. So we always say less oil more often is the best way. And unlike, unlike synthetic medications, you don't need to wait four hours before using the oil again. You can apply the oil, and if there's still some discomfort, then you can add one to two drops more in just a few minutes. So one method that a lot of people love using with using essential oils is taking a very relaxing detox bath. And so if you ever do add oils to your bathtub, I usually use about 10 drops. Make sure that you're using a, um, a, an oil or a milk inside your tub where the oil can actually, the essential oil can cling to. It keeps the essential oils from riding on top of the, the water and you know where you can get it all on one spot on your skin. So I love adding coconut milk to my bathtub. It's very soothing and relaxing and great for your skin. So I add about a cup of coconut milk and my 10 drops of, let's say, lavender for a relaxing bath. So why doTERRA? This is probably the question I get asked the most often when, I, when I'm using essential oils or when I'm sharing about essential oils. Because like I said before, there are so many brands on the market. But I chose doTERRA because of their co-impact sourcing model. And this is where they are sourcing the oils all over the world so that each oil that you're using is derived from its indigenous environment. And so when they're grown and when they're harvested in the proper altitude, the proper climate, you know, the proper seasons it's harvested, the soil, all of that has a major impact on the, on the medicinal benefits of that herb or that oil. So, doTERRA has a far superior product. And so this is why I chose doTERRA, and this is why I love sharing about doTERRA. 
The second reason I chose doTERRA was because of their certified pure therapeutic grade trademark. I loved knowing that doTERRA was, they pretty much, they said this is unacceptable because there is absolutely no governing body or agency overlooking the essential oil market and saying, yes, you do have therapeutic grade. Yes, you do have, you know, medicinal grade. Yes, you can use this internally. There's no governing agency that does that. So it's very scary when you find all these essential oils on the market and you're not sure of the purity of it. So their certified pure therapeutic grade is an internal standard that they've developed for themselves. And so every oil has zero fillers, synthetics, dyes, no pesticides, no contaminants of any kind. They're just pure, unadulterated gifts of the earth that God's given us. So let's kind of transition into learning about essential oils are all over the Bible. I mean, if you were to look up, I mean, you probably know several different passages in the Bible. Our very, very popular one, of course, is the gifts that was given to the Christ child. But there are oils even way before that. In the Old Testament, they are referenced in 36 of the 39 books of the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, we actually only see it 10 of the 27 books. So, do you guys know what the first oil mentioned in the Bible is? Kind of think about that for a second. Let's talk about the purpose of oils, okay? And the reason why we talk about oils in the Bible. And you're going to see many Bible verses, and you're going to hear me quote many Bible verses tonight. So if you want to, feel free to grab your Bible and some notes to kind of take notes of everything. I am using, I believe I wrote it down. I don't know where it went. Okay, sorry, I got lost in my notes. Um, so take notes, write it down, look it up later, and really, really get to know the Bible verses. I loved doing this study and to prepare for this class because it actually reminded me of so many things I have forgotten. So when we talk about Bible verses in this class, I want you to know that it's not meant to put a divine stamp on our oils that we sell, okay? It's not meant to imply that these essential oils are biblical or it's a very Christian way of dealing with your health issues because that is not the case at all. It's simply a class that we're gonna set out and we're just gonna explore the appearance of oils and plants and trees and herbs, where they're derived from, and where they're in the Bible at, and just to tell you some modern versions of the oils that we're using today. So how does that sound? So theologically, oil is a symbol of the Holy Spirit throughout scripture. And we know that the primary purpose of oil in the Bible is symbolic mostly and not medicinal. So keep that in mind as well as you hear the Bible verses that I read. And we are gonna use English Standard Version. So the statements, though, from this class concerning the health benefits, we now know thousands of years later, and even more now, there's studies coming out all the time. Just go to PubMed and type in whatever essential oil you want to look up and see the research and the studies that have been done on it. So the statements in this class that we, we are going to talk about with the health benefits and the health issues and what oils to use, those are derived from studies that have been tested and that have been used now, um, which are not in the Bible, okay? So God, I do be truly believe, is the only one who can really bring you true comfort in times of tension, worry, grief, all right? The o essential oils have never meant to be a replacement for that. And a lot of times I'll hear somebody saying, you need this oil, you need this oil, you need this oil. And I'm thinking to myself, you just need Jesus. So I just want you guys to know that, you know, that he is the ultimate oil that we could use for anything. And essential oils are not a replacement for that. 
as well, when we talk about any meditation that's done in the Bible, it's a very different meaning today. All right. Meditation today can mean very different than what it did in the Bible. In the Bible, meditation is talking about meditating on the scripture or God's law that whatever's being talked about, not any kind of metaphysical or new age kind of med meditation that is very often used today. So that's a very, very big difference that I wanted to make sure I mentioned. So were essential oils used in Bible times? What do you guys think? Was, were, essential oils used in the Bible? Here's the thing. It wasn't actually distillation of, of water. Wasn't even created until a, a, Aristotle in 384. He talks about the first kind of distillation process where he mentions that he's, has distilled pure water from, from seawater. So that's the first time in history that we see any kind of distillation um, mentioned. But then there's Pliny the Elder who came around at the time of Christ. And so he was probably a child during Christ's ministry. And he writes of a very primitive method that was used even in that day where the condensate, condensation of, in which the oil acquired was done by heating a rosin, okay? So a rosin is kind of like a, a thing that sits on top of a still, and it, it kind of, what it does is it evaporates and it condenses the, the, um, the oil or the resin or the sap or the bark, whatever kind of you know, medicinal product they have taken from the earth, and that's how they have created an oil. So we see that actually around the time of Christ. But when we talk about essential oils nowadays, we are using a process called steam distillation. And this is where, this is what we have developed thanks to you know, all the modern science and technology nowadays. And this was actually developed around the eighth century. So 801 to 900 um, AD. And these are what I like to call gifts of the earth. And that's actually what doTERRA means. It means gift of the earth. So if essential oils were not even used in, in the Bible times, then what were the oils that they used then? I think that's a very relevant question that we need to ask ourselves. So if the earliest records of essential oils come from India, and we see them come from Persia and Egypt, and Greece and Rome, and they were traded very, very, um, they were traded a lot. And we see in history that they traded what's called aromatic oils and oils that smell really good and ointments. And they traded this with the Oriental countries. So most likely, these were those extracts from the plants, the roots, and the leaves. And they had been extracted, extracted and infused into a fatty oil like olive oil. And olive oil is very, very common throughout the Bible. So that method is where you take the herb and you put it in the olive oil and you put it out in the sun or in the, you know, somewhere where it can infuse those medicinal qualities. Like if we took mint and put it in with some olive oil for six weeks, that olive oil would smell very fragrant. fragrant. So that most likely is what was used throughout Bible times. So even though steam distilled oils were not around throughout the Bible, the plants, the same plants were. And so the medicinal purposes of those plants are similar. Okay. So let's talk about our first essential oil. Myrrh. This is one of my absolute favorite essential oils. Um, it just, it, it's actually the first oil mentioned in the Bible. I didn't know if you guys knew that. I did ask you that question a few slides ago. But it was the first Bible mentioned in the Bible. And it's in Genesis 37, 23 through 28. It's the story of Joseph and his brothers. That's where we see it first. And they sat down to eat bread. 
And they lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels, bearing spicy and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. So that was the first mention of myrrh in the Bible. Another really popular reference is we see it in Genesis 43, 11. And their father Israel said unto them, if you must be so now, do this. Take the best fruits of the land in your vessels and carry down the man a present, a little balm and a little honey, spices and myrrh, nuts and almonds. But this was very fascinating to me. And I really had to dig into it today because I wanted to really understand the beauty treatment that was done to Esther. And so in Esther 2, we also see it in verse 12 where it says, every, ma every maid's turn came to go in to King Ahasuerus, and that's King Xerxes. That's the name we know now. And after she had been 12 months, according to the manner of the woman, there were days there were the days of their purification accomplished, to wit, six months with the oil of myrrh and six months with sweet odors and with other things for the purification of women. So I thought that was fascinating that she had six months of beauty treatment with myrrh. And so, of course, I, you know, I know some of my beauty routines that I do with myrrh. So I wonder if it was very similar to what Esther did. So these six months that she used myrrh before she went in to see King Xerxes, she most likely used the myrrh to address some troublesome, trouble, some skin problems that she might have been ha having, like cracking skin or, and back in those days, you know, when there's not much buildings around, wind damage from, from being out in the, the wind and sunburn as well and signs of aging that can come. So most likely that's what she was doing with the myrrh is using it for those beauty treatments to address those specific skin problems that women have always had <laughs> and still do today. We see it in Proverbs 7, 17, where it says, I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. And so when you hear the word aloes as well mentioned in scripture, it's actually not aloe vera like you would think. It's, it's sandalwood. And so we're going to actually talk about sandalwood, so I won't go off too much on there. But myrrh is used many times throughout scripture, a lot. You will see it in Matthew 2.11 as well. Um, you will see it in John 19.39, and that's the verse that's up there on the screen right now. And that was what they used with Nicodemus, used with Jesus when they actually did the Jewish uh, burial custom. So myrrh is a, a very common oil and resin that you will see throughout the Bible. Myrrh was deemed so valuable throughout history that it was sometimes valued more, more valuable than gold. Um, it's derived from the very gummy resin that it's kind of almost like a sap, but it's a, a harder, it's like a resin that comes from the thorny myrrh tree. And it's been used for centuries internally and externally for different kinds of health benefits. We also see it in perfume. We see it used as an incense. We see it used as a health aid. Um, and we also see it in religious ceremonies, also for embalming. It has very powerful cleansing properties, especially for your mouth or your throat. It's a very good one for oral support. Um, it's very soothing to the skin, which is why we see that Esther, it was part of the, the beauty treatment that she did. It promotes a very smooth, young looking complexion. It's one that I used, I use almost daily on my face. I, I apply a little bit of my almond oil and I put it on with a couple drops of myrrh and I use it on my skin and my face before I go to bed at night. So some of the practical uses that we know now that we can use myrrh for is for the mouth and the throat. It's a very cleansing to the mouth and the throat and for the skin. And it's also a great oil emotionally. It provides a very good balance to your emotions. Um, it's one that you can add to your toothpaste. Okay, so if you um, are, you know, if you want to add it, if you're having some discomfort on your gums or a tooth, 
You can add a little bit to your toothpaste and brush your teeth with it. I love to diffuse myrrh. I love the smell of myrrh. It's a very earthy smell. Um, it's very grounding. I add a few drops to my diffuser and I love adding a, a citrus oil with it, like wild orange or lemon, kind of just very invigorating and very, very um, energizing. You can add some to your moisturizer, you know, at night if you want to add a little bit to your facial moisturizer to kind of help promote, have that younger looking skin or those fine lines and wrinkles. It's really good for that. It's a good mouth rinse. So and once again, we see how beneficial it is for that oral support. You can rinse your mouth out with it. Um, you can gargle with it. And it's another really good one to use right now throughout the holidays when tension is super high and stressy. It's very stressful. So you feel like you're never going to get everything done. It's one that you can use just to promote those peaceful feelings throughout your home. So I love diffusing it. I also love diffusing it right now just because of the history of it as it being one of the gifts that was given to Jesus when he was born by the wise men. And it's, it's a, an incredible oil. It's one that I would never want to be without. It's one of my favorites, and I just loved learning even more about this oil in the Bible times. So let's move on to another favorite of mine, kasha. Okay, not to be confused with cinnamon, although it smells very similar because it is a close relative. It's a very spicy and strong aroma. And it can be used in small quantities, okay? So we don't use a lot of it because it's a very warm oil. So if you actually apply it topically straight to your skin, it can actually cause some redness and it's a very hot oil. So I would never recommend you apply it directly to your skin without using a carrier oil like almond oil or coconut oil. It's been used for thousands of years to maintain physical health. But it's also good, another good emotional one that really helps provide a good emotional well, grounding and well-being. It's one of the oils that's mentioned in the Old, Old Testament. Um, and it's a warm oil, like I said. It helps promote healthy immune function. So it's really good at boosting your immune system. So right now, you know, when our immune systems are all flared up, I don't know about you guys, but they're flared up over here at my house. We make sure that we have our kasha in the diffuser going almost all day um, because just breathing in those aromatic benefits of kasha helps boost our immune system and keeps it strong. So like I said, due to its caustic nature, you do want to make sure that you dilute it with fractionated coconut oil. And fractionated coconut oil is coconut oil that is constantly in its liquid form. And it comes in most of our essential oil starter kits that I'm going to show you guys at the end. Kasha is used very often in cooking. Um, it, it sometimes is used, it could be used as a replacement for cinnamon. So if you don't have cinnamon, you could use kasha in your cooking. And I love adding kasha or cinnamon to my brownies. Um, I add just a drop for the whole batter and they come out tasting so delicious. Um, it is, like I said, it, you can see on the, on the screen right there in Exodus 30, 23 to 25, that we see it was mentioned in the Old Testament. Um, take, take unto thee principal spices of pure myrrh, 500 shekels, and of sweet cinnamon half so much, even 250 shekels, and of sweet calamus, 250 shekels, and of kasha, 500 shekels. And I actually had to look that up, how much 500 shekels were. It's 12 and a half pounds. So 12 and a half pounds of kasha. Could you imagine how much that was? After the shekel of the sanctuary and of olive oil, oil, olive, a hen. And hen is almost a gallon. Okay, so it's almost a gallon of olive oil. And thou shalt make it a oil of holy ointment an ointment compound after the art of the apothecary. It shall be a holy anointing oil. So this is what God instructed um, for, the, for the tabernacle, the anointing oil that was supposed to be used that, during that time. Now, how do we actually use kasha today? 
So Kasha, not only is it a powerful immune booster, immune booster, like I've said, but it also can help promote healthy cardiovascular system function. It also is very uplifting aroma. So it's great to diffuse and blends very well with those citrus oils. You know, I love diffusing it a little bit with some wild orange or some tangerine. And it's very, very uplifting. Clove and ginger as well go very good with kasha, especially during the fall when you want your house to smell like a pumpkin pie or apple pie. It also is really excellent at warding off those hunger cravings. So if you are, you know, hoping to lose some weight in the new year, kasha is excellent at helping to, you know, ward off those cravings and to keep you from munching too much. It should be used with a carrier oil because it is a warm oil. And so if you want a very warming sensation, you can add it with a carrier oil and massage it into your shoulders or your feet or the back of your neck um, or your lower back, you know, for a very warm massage. So that is Kasha, one of my, oh, one of my favorites again. So I always say it's my favorite, but then I see this one and I'm like, no, this is my favorite. Um, sandalwood. Sandalwood was also known as aloes in the Bible. And so it's not to be confused with aloe vera. So when you see aloe in the Bible, it's most likely talking about sandalwood. It comes, it's steam distill, distilled from the wood of a 40 year old tree. Okay. And we see sandalwood aloes in many, many scriptures in the Old Testament, starting with Numbers 24 8. As the valleys are, they spread forth. As gardens by the riverside, as the trees align aloes, which the Lord hath planted, and as cedar trees beside the waters. We also see it in Psalms 45, 8. And thy garments smell of myrrh and aloes and kasha out of the ivory palaces, whereby they have made thee glad. Um, Song of Solomon, we see that... Aloes or sandalwood was also mentioned in Song of Solomon 4.14. Spikenard and saffron, calamus and cinnamon with all trees of frankincense, myrrh and aloes with all the chief spices. And then, of course, we saw it in John 19.39. And there came Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. And they took the body of Jesus and wound it in linen with those spices as the manner of the Jews is to bury. So sandalwood is a name that's given to a class of fragrant woods that unlike, and unlike any other, sandalwood can actually retain its fragrance for decades. Um, the oil and the wood, sandalwood, have been highly valued for centuries, okay? Sandalwood has actually a documented history of many different applications and ways that you can use it. We see it during um, the Egyptians with religious ceremonies. It's used for enhancing meditation. And the, and the Egyptians, we know, have used sandalwood along with myrrh for embalming purposes. It's very beneficial to the skin. It, it's one of those ones that I love using on my face as well. It helps with those fine lines and wrinkles. Very soft and very soothing. You will wake up the next morning after you put sandalwood on your face thinking your face feels like a baby's butt. It is so soothing to the skin. It's another one that I love using in my hair. I use it a natural serum, okay? I don't buy any of those serums that might have different things in it that I don't know and can't read the ingredients. I just add a couple drops of sandalwood and I, I kind of move my hands throughout my hair and it's really, really, really soft. Um, when we talk about the practical use of sandalwood, not only can you use it on your skin and for skin imperfections, it's a excellent enhancer to the mood. So it's a very good emotional oil, very grounding, very soothing. Because it's a woods, woodsy oil, it has that very it rooted 
um, sensation that it can bring to you when you smell it. Um, sandalwood as well is used very frequently in meditation because it's, it provides that grounding properties to it. So um, when you get out of the shower, I love adding it to hair, my wet hair. That's one of my favorite ways to do it. It can help restore the moisture that's in your hair. Um, you can also add a little bit to your shampoo if you want to do it that way. I love diffusing it. So this is one of my favorites to diffuse, especially when I don't want something very strong and overpowering. I want something just very calming, very soothing. So I'll, uh, I'll diffuse this after a long day. And, you know, kind of as I'm going to bed at night and getting myself ready or reading a book, it helps to reduce those feelings of stress and anxiety that we all carry. So that's sandalwood. That's, uh, that's one of my favorite oils that everyone needs to have. And But let's talk about my absolute one that I would say everybody needs to have in their house, and that's frankincense. And we all know frankincense because that was another one, another one of those gifts to the Christ child. It's been used for thousands of years, nearly more than 5,000 years. And we even see in 1458 BC, there was a mural that was depicting sacks of frankincense that had been traded in the lands of Punt. And it was, it was, we see this on the walls of an ancient Egyptian queen back in 1458. It also means that this would have been used or around during the time of Moses. 12 years even before the exodus and crossing of the Red Sea. It's one of uh, those that's used as incense. It's described in scriptures as incense. It's used, it's used by the Jews. It was used by the Greeks, the Romans. It's, uh, in the Old Testament, we're told that worshipers of Yahweh from Sheba come with frankincense. And we see that in Isaiah 66. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall bring good news, the praises of the Lord. And we see it in Song of Solomon as well. A garden locked is my sister, my bride. A spring locked, a fountain sealed. Your shoots are an orchard of pomegranates with all choices fruits. Henna with nard, nard with saffron, calamus and cinnamon with all trees of frankincense. So frankincense is also part of one of those special blends that we talked about at um, the at the tabernacle, it was interestingly it was the altar was made of gold, and the anointing oil that was poured on the priest and the furniture in the tabernacle included myrrh. So gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Right? Sounds familiar, doesn't it? It also appears in Exodus 30, 34. and the Lord said unto Moses, "Take unto thee sweet spices, stacked and." on Nietzsche and Galbanum. These sweet spices with pure frankincense of each shall be a light weight. So that's where God is directing Moses in the creation of that holy anointing oil for the tabernacle. We also see it in Leviticus. It was used uh, to anoint the grain offering um, and the tabernacle bread. Frankincense is very much often linked to myrrh. So in addition to the reference of the tabernacle above, um, we see that Song of Solomon as well used it very frequently in combination with myrrh. And of course, it was one of those three gifts that were given to Jesus. So frankincense essential oil nowadays, how do we use it? It is known as one of the most prized and precious essential oils on the earth. Um, it is the king of oils is kind of what we nickname it. And not only... You know, I always say if it was good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for us. So I love knowing that I'm using something that was given to, to Jesus. You know, it might not be in the same form that it was back then, but it's from the frankincense resin. So it's known to promote healthy cellular function. It can help restore, repair damaged DNA in our cells. It's one of those that when you inhale it, you're going to instantly feel that peace and relaxation that comes from just that inhaling it from your olfactory system. Um, some of my favorite ways to use frankincense is I love diffusing it. Okay. It's one of those ones that I have to have in my diffuser at least twice a week. 
I love diffusing it with, um, with On Guard, which is our protective blend of oils. I love diffusing it with lemon. I love diffusing those two together. It's one that you can take, like I said, for that promoting that healthy cells and repairing those um, damaged cellular DNA. You can take it internally. doTERRA essential oils um, and frankincense in particular is one that you can use for that targeted cell repair um, focus that you want to use it as. I always recommend taking it in a capsule, so an empty vegetable capsule, and you can get those through doTERRA. You just put a couple drops of frankincense in it. I add a little bit of olive oil to help it go down your esophagus um, and directly into your stomach. I love using this one as well on my face. This is another one that's excellent for helping those blemishes and helping to rejuvenate the skin. It's one that you can use uh, to promote relaxation. A lot of people love diffusing it during their prayer time. It's very grounding. It's another very grounding oil that everybody needs to have. Pretty much if you have something going on and you don't know what to use, grab your frankincense because I guarantee you it's going to help that in some way. A lot of people love rubbing it onto their shoulders, um, especially at night before you go to bed, if you want that, you know, really ground you and bring you into a good deep sleep, you can rub some frankincense on your shoulders along with some carrier oil. So that is pretty much the four one that, ones that I wanted to focus on. And so you can see that essential oils are truly the gift of the earth. Um, I've hope you've enjoyed this look at essential oils in the Bible. If you're interested in purchasing any of the oils that we discussed in this class, I want you to know how to get the best discount possible. And so I, I don't let my friends spend full price on oils, anybody. And so I consider you my friend as we're sitting here, wherever I'm sitting in your room or your house. Um, I don't want you to ever spend full price on your oils. So you can actually save 25% on your oils by getting a wholesale membership. And so it's very similar to Sam's or Costco. You pay a flat fee, $35 for the year. And whenever you need an essential oil, you're able to order it right from your own house in your own account 24 seven. So you can even qualify for more savings if you want to become a loyalty member. That's completely optional though. And most people actually start using essential oils by getting a starter kit. And these are bundles that have already been put together are discounted even more. And then that wholesale membership fee is actually waived. So you actually end up saying a ton of money when you do start with an essential oil starter kit. It's not required to buy a starter kit. You can simply pay that $35 membership fee and then add whatever oils you like to your order. But here's a really beautiful thing is in December, doTERRA is actually giving away free frankincense and so we talked a lot about frankincense and how beneficial it is to every single person could use it and so if you're brand new and you haven't started using doTERRA essential oils yet you if you set up and purchase a starter kit through the person who invited you to this class and if it's over that 200 PV which is equal to $200 almost you're going to get the free bottle, full size bottle of frankincense from doTERRA. And this bottle retails at $93. So you actually end up saving a lot of money. And let me tell you something, guys. I've been a part of doTERRA now for three years and I've never, ever, ever bought frankincense. I wait until December and I stock up. So this is a steal and you have just, you just happen to be here at a very good time. So let's look at the starter kits and remember as I'm talking about the starter kits those ones that start over 200 PV which is around $200 and I'll make sure I mention which ones those are those are the ones that you're gonna get free frankincense with so here are some of my favorite starter kits the diamond kit oh all the oils all the products at the best investment 2500 um, and I know that's expensive to a lot of you, but a lot of you might be sitting there and going, I am just ready for revamping my healthcare. And I really believe that this can do it, that this kit is for you. I also like to call this one and the every oil kit entrepreneur kits, 
Because if you're sitting there thinking, I could be sharing doTERRA and I could be creating an income in doTERRA, these are two really good kits for that as well. So the every oil kit is a little cheaper, but uh, you get every single oil, okay? With the diamond kit, you get every single oil and product. Now when you buy these kits, you actually, the following month, you're gonna get some money back as well. So it's actually a very excellent savings. The oil sharing kit, you can see at the bottom left of your screen, this is if you are wanting to share your oils with your friends and family, all right? You're gonna get like two or three bottles of our most loved oils, and you're gonna get our eight hour diffuser, and it's a really good kit to use if you really wanna share those oils with your friends and family, or if you wanna break it up and give it as, as gifts in this uh, giving season. So all of three, these three kits, you're gonna get that free frankincense as well. Now the natural solutions kit at the bottom right is our most popular kit. So this is a little bit of everything that you need. It's got our very popular supplements. It's got our eight hour diffuser, a wooden box, some shampoo, conditioner, some toothpaste, and our very most popular oils as well. So this kit is a very popular kit and a lot of people start with this one. Now when you do buy the natural solutions kit, the following month, if you place a $100 order, you're gonna get $100 back from doTERRA. So it's pretty much you're gonna get $100 for free. So I love this kit, I love it. It's probably my favorite kit. So here's a few of the other kits as well. So the family wellness kit, you also will get the free frankincense with because it's over that 200. It is excellent for a family with children because the oils that you get in this kit are tailored for kids in mind, all right? They are roller bottles, which means it's got a little ball on the end and you roll it directly on your skin. So this kit can only be used for topical use though. That's the only downside of this kit. Doesn't have a diffuser and you won't be able to diffuse these oils. However, you will be able to use it topically right away on your family and it's perfectly diluted with your children in mind. When you buy this kit, you get our very popular supplements and you get our kids' vitamins and probiotics. So this is a great kit if you have little ones. You'll see the Home Essentials kit, another very popular kit that includes 10 of our most popular oils and full-size bottles. And what I really like about this is you're also going to get my favorite diffuser. I love this diffuser. It's called the Petal Diffuser, and so this is an excellent kit. You will need to use your own carrier oil at home. So if you have olive oil or almond oil, if you're ready to use it topically, you will get that frankincense in there that we talked about, and you're going to get an extra one as well. And this includes all of our 10 most popular oils for immune function, respiratory support, that digestive blend I was talking to you about, lemon for diffusing, on guard for diffusing, deep blue for soothing those muscle aches and pains as well. Now at the bottom, this is, these are our budget-friendly kits. So these kits, you won't get the, frankinc the free frankincense with. However, these are great kits if you're on a budget. The Aroma Touch Diffuse Kit has our top eight oils for emotional support, immune support. Um, it's got peppermint in there, which is excellent for that digestive support. You're also going to get the coconut oil, the fractionated coconut oil, and you'll also get my favorite petal diffuser. And so we also have the Family Essentials Kit. So this is another good budget-friendly kit that includes those 10 most popular oils, but there is no diffuser in that one, okay? So I usually recommend people with that Aroma Touch Diffused Kit. That's a very excellent, versatile kit if you are on a budget. So now what? So I, I'm, just, I'm just so excited that you're here, and I hope that some of you, maybe by a show of chat, comments you can tell me if you've picked up a few things that you're going to be able to use i hope so would you do you kind of feel like you want to spend more time learning about essential oils on an ongoing basis i know it's overwhelming at first we all were there i'm sure that you can see the value in using essential oils and what it could bring to your family and maybe you're sitting there and you're wondering um maybe first maybe you're sitting there and wondering and thinking that you want to use something safer, cheaper, more effective to support your health. Anybody thinking that? 
Maybe you're sitting there and you're wondering and thinking that you really want a healthier lifestyle for you and your family. Or maybe you've thought several times over the last year that something like this, something natural could be helpful, but you just aren't sure what it was and you feel very overwhelmed with, you know, all the options out there. But if you said no to any of these things, we know that maybe essential oils aren't a fit for you right now, and that's totally okay. But let me go ahead and talk a little bit about a few of the most common questions that I hear when people are starting out with doTERRA. And the first one is, is how much is it and can I afford it? And so you saw by the starter kits on there how much they were. And so it really depends on you and what you want to get. Most people start with the natural solutions kit, the every oil kit, or the diamond kit, the home essentials kit too. So it just depends on your budget. I always recommend that you get the biggest kit for what you can afford because you will save the most money that way, but we don't want to take food off your table. All right. But the best way to buy is absolutely getting a wholesale membership. So when you compare the cost of your healthcare, your insurance, or driving to the out in the middle of the night to the grocery store to get something for your child who wakes up with ear discomfort. I know how that can feel and how desperate that can feel. So for me, it's been so empowering knowing that I have the answers to the most common health concerns that pop up in my family. So there's something for everyone, guys. Even college students are using essential oils in their dorm room and putting diffusers in their dorm room. Second, let's just say that you want to do this. Um, maybe it's bad timing. Maybe it's just you can't do it right now. I want you to know that whenever you're ready to get started, somebody wants to help you. Um, maybe third, you know you want to do this, but you have to talk to your spouse first or your partner. That we totally understand. We promise we don't want you guys to start any kind of family fights. Nobody's sleeping on the couch. So we want to give you guys the information to talk to your spouse with about. All right. So whoever invited you to this, just ask them for that. If you want the recording as well, we can share that with you too. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going just to tell you guys that if you are sitting there and maybe you're going, yes, I'm in, you had me at hello. I love this stuff. I can see myself using it. Please make sure that you chat with the person who invited you to this. We can actually get you started tonight if that's something that you want. So then you're able to get that free frankincense. Maybe you're part of that second group and you have a few questions. All right. Um, check in with the person who invited you and ask them any kind of specific questions that you might have about maybe some of your health goals and your health concerns. Um, we'll get your answer questions answered quickly. All right. And we want to help you pick out the right kit for you. And if you're in the third group and this is not for you, that's totally fine too. We just hope you had a good time. I do want to ask you though, if you could, um, maybe during this webinar, you thought of a few people who might benefit from learning more about essential oils. If you could just jot their name down and send it to the person who invited you, we would love helping them get plugged into one of our next classes. So I hope that you guys enjoyed tonight. I had so much fun teaching you guys. Um, I want you to know that my offer always stands. My wellness team is happy to answer any questions that you have about using essential oils for you, for your family, for your children. Goodness, if you want to use them on your chickens, I can help you with that as well. Um, my ultimate passion in sharing about essential oils is just empowering you to make more conscious de decisions in your healthcare. So please contact the person who invited you to this webinar to discuss any specific oils for your health goals. And thank you guys so much again for sharing this experience with me. I hope that you all have a wonderful night and hopefully we'll see you guys on another webinar at another time. Bye everyone.